Hello and welcome to week 13 of NFL predictions. My name is Seidel and I will be predicting each game this week, who wins and who loses. There were some upsets last week and I think we have some great games this week. So let's just get into it, starting with 7-4 Los Angeles Rams taking on the 6-5 Arizona Cardinals. The Rams are coming off of a close loss from the 49ers, 23-20. And the Cardinals are also coming off of a close loss from the New England Patriots, 20-17. The Rams' offense struggled a lot against the 49ers with Jared Goff throwing two interceptions, and their defense is really what kept them in that game. And while their defense has been spectacular this year, only allowing 19 points and 316 yards per game, the Cardinals' defense has also been good, only allowing 23 points, 369 yards on average per game. And I do like the Cardinals' offense a lot more with them scoring 27 points and 411 yards per game. While the Rams' offense hasn't been bad by any means, I'm going to go with Kyler Murray and the, and the Cardinals 26-24 over the Rams. And now we have the 9-2 New Orleans Saints taking on the 4-7 Atlanta Falcons. The Saints are coming off of a big win over the Broncos, 31-3. And the Falcons are also coming off of a huge win over the Raiders, 43-6. And these two teams actually played only a couple weeks ago with the Saints winning 24-9. The Falcons' de defense did step it up a lot, though, against the Raiders, only allowing 6 points and under 50 yards rushing in that game. And the Saints are winning, but they're mostly winning through the run game. So I think Taysom Hill's going to have to step it up a lot, and especially against the Falcons' defense that, that has only allowed 100, point, 100 yards per game on defense, but they have allowed over 300 yards passing. So I think the Saints are going to have to pass, uh, pass the ball a lot, and I think Taysom Hill's going to have to step it up in this game. I think he does, and I'm going to go with the Saints 27-30 over the Falcons. And now we have the 4-7 Detroit Lions taking on the 5-6 Chicago Bears. The Lions are co coming off of a loss from the Texans, 41-25. And the Bears are also coming off of a loss from the Packers with the exact same score, 41-25, which makes a five-game losing streak for the Bears. And the Lions' defense has struggled a lot this year, only averaging 29 points, almost 30, and over 400 yards allowed per game. And everything seems to be going downhill for the Lions uh, the past couple weeks with them firing their head coach and general manager. I think the Bears get their first win in five weeks. I'm going to go 22-17 to over the Lions. And now we have a big game between the 8-3 Cleveland Browns and the 8-3 Tennessee Titans. The Browns are coming off of a win over the Jaguars, 27-25. And the Titans are also coming off of a win over the Colts, 45-26. The Browns' defense, I think, has been a little better than the Titans this year, only allowing 26 points, 372 yards per game. I think the Titans' offense has been a lot better, better than the Browns' offense, almost averaging 30 points and 400 yards per game, one of the best offenses in the league statistically. And with Ryan Tannehill having a great season, 23 touchdowns, 4 interceptions, 2,600 yards passing. And while Baker Mayfield hasn't had a bad season either, uh, I, I, he has 17 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, 2,100 yards on the year. I'm going to go with the Titans. I think it's going to be a close one, but I'm going to go 27-24 to 24 over the Browns. And now we have the 2-8-1 Cincinnati Bengals going up against the 7-4 Miami Dolphins. The Bengals are coming off of a close loss from the Giants, 19-17. And the Dolphins are coming off of a win over the Jets, 20-3. And the, and the Dolphins' defense has been one of the best in the league this year, only allowing 18 points, 389 yards per game. And especially going up against an, a Bengals offense that's struggled a lot, only averaging 20 points, 357 yards a game. And their defense hasn't been any better, allowing 26 points and 395 yards uh, on average a game. I, th I say with or without Tua, I'm going to say the Dolphins pull out a win here, 27-20 to over the Bengals. And now we have the 1-10 Jacksonville Jaguars facing off against the 5-6 Minnesota Vikings. The Jaguars are on a 10-game losing streak and a loss last week against the Browns 27-25. The Vikings are coming off of a really close win over the Panthers 28-27. The Jaguars offense has struggled a lot this year, especially since they're on their third QB now. They've only averaged 20 points, 347 yards a game, and their defense really hasn't helped them, allowing 29 points and 420 yards a game uh, on average. On the other side, the Vikings' defense has also struggled, allowing 27 points, 391 yards a game, but their offense has been a lot better, averaging 26 points and almost 400 yards uh, on average a game. And with Kirk Cousins having a fantastic game last week, throwing three touchdowns and 23 touchdowns and 11 interceptions, on the year also 
throwing uh, almost 2,800 yards passing this year. I'm going to go with the Vikings 30-25 to over the Jaguars. And now we have the 6-5 Las Vegas Raiders going up against the 0-11 New York Jets. The Raiders are, are coming off of a big loss from the Falcons, 43-6. to The Jets are also coming off of a loss from the Dolphins, 23 or 20 to 3. And the Raiders offense did struggle a lot in that game, only having 40 rushing yards and 200 passing yards against the Falcons defense. And they do have a couple injuries at the running back position. Uh, and I do think that this could be a game where the Jets get their first uh, win of the season, but I don't think it's going to happen. I'm going to go with the Raiders 29 to 19 over the Jets. And now we have the 7-4 Indianapolis Colts going up against the 4-7 Houston Texans. The Colts are coming off of a big loss from the Titans, or 45-26. And the Texans are coming off of a big win over the Lions, 41-25. And while the Colts offense has been really good this year, averaging 27 points, 376 yards a game, I think it's their defense has really been the key for them, only allowing 23 points, 300, uh, 326 yards on average allowed per game. On the other hand, the Texans have allowed 27 points and over 423 yards on average a game. Even with Deshaun Watson have, having a fantastic season, 24 touchdowns, 5 interceptions, over 3,200 yards passing. But now with their leading receiver and Will Fuller out for the rest of the season, I'm going to go with the Colts. I think it's going to be... a Pretty close one, but I'm going to go 27-21 over the Texans. And now we have the 4-7 and seven New York Giants going up against the 8-3 and three Seattle Seahawks. And the Giants are, are coming off of a close win over the Bengals, 19-17. The Seahawks are also coming off of a close win over the Eagles, 23-17. And while the, the Giants offense has struggled a lot this year, only averaging 19 points, 330 yards a game, their defense has really been able to keep a lot of these games close, only allowing 23 points, 358 yards a game. Uh, I don't think it's going to be enough against the, Se the Seahawks offense, which is one of the best in the league, averaging 32 points, 420 yards a game. And while their defense has been uh, struggling a bit this season, allowing 28 points, 446 yards a game, mostly through the air, with 355 of that being through the air, I'm going to go with the Seahawks. I do think it's going to be a pretty close one, 28-24 over the Giants. And now we have the 3-7-1 Philadelphia Eagles going up against the 8-3 Green Bay Packers. The Eagles are, are coming off of a close loss from the Seahawks, 23-17, which makes a three-game losing streak for them. And the Packers are coming off of a win over the Bears, 41-25. And the Eagles' offense has been pretty good this season, uh, averaging 25 points, 366 yards a game. The Packers defense has actually been really similar statistically, uh, only allowing 25 points and 360 yards a game also. So very similar stati statistically, but the Eagles offense has struggled a lot, only allowing or only averaging 21 points, 350 yards a game. On the other hand, the Packers offense has been one of the best in the league with 32 averaging almost 32 points, over 400 yards uh total on average a game and Aaron Dro and, and with Aaron Rodgers having a fantastic season 33 touchdowns four interceptions I think the Packers win this one 30 to 23 over the Eagles and now we have the five and six New England Patriots facing off against the three and eight Los Angeles Chargers the Patriots are coming off of a big win over the Cardinals 20 to 17 and the Chargers are, are, are coming off of a loss from the Bills 27 to 17 and the Patriots offense has struggled a lot this season, even in their win over the Cardinals last week with Cam Newton throwing two interceptions in that game. He has nine interceptions uh, on the season with only four touchdowns, almost 2,000 yards passing. On the other hand, uh, Justin Herbert with 23 touchdowns, seven interceptions, over 3,000 yards passing. I really do think this one could go either way, but I'm going to go with the Patriots. I think it's going to be a really close one. I'm going to go 26 to 24 over the Chargers. And now we have the 4-7 Denver Broncos going up against the 10-1 Kansas City Chiefs. The Broncos are, are coming off of a big loss from the Saints, 31-3. And the Chiefs are, are coming off of a close win over the Buccaneers, 27-24. And I think the Chiefs offense has been the best in the league, averaging 31.6 points per game and 433.5 yards on average a game as well. Their defense has also been really good, only allowing 21 points, 370 yards a game. On the other hand, the Broncos' offense has been right there with the Jets, only only averaging 19 points, 341 yards a game. So not quite as bad as the Jets, 
but still has struggled a lot this season. And their defense has, hasn't been any better, allowing 27 points, 359 yards uh, allowed on average, too. And Patrick Mahomes with 30 touchdowns, only two interceptions, almost 3,500 yards passing. I don't think this is going to be much of a close a close one. I'm going to go 31 to 20 over the Broncos. Or over, over the Broncos. And now we have the four and seven Washington football team facing off against the 10 and 0 Pittsburgh Steelers. Washington's coming off of a big win over the Cowboys, 41 to 16. And the Steelers game against the Ravens keeps getting postponed. I'm not even sure if they're going to play this week, but I'm going to assume that there are no injuries that happen in that game. Uh, but both defenses have been really good this year, especially the Steelers with only allowing 17 points, 332 yards uh, allowed per game. Actually, both defenses only allowing 332 yards a game. Washington allowing just a couple more points a game with 22 to the Steelers 17. The Steelers offense, however, has been really good, almost averaging 30 points, 356 yards a game to Washington's 22 points, 347 yards on average a game. And Ben Roethlisberger having a fantastic season, 24 touchdowns, 5 interceptions, 2,500 yards passing. I'm going to go with the Steelers this one, 28-18 over Washington. And now we have the 8-3 Buffalo Bills facing off against the 5-6 San Francisco 49ers. The Bills are coming off of a win over the Chargers, 27-17. The 49ers are also coming off of a win over the Rams, 23-20. And the Bills' defense has been pretty good this year, only allowing 25 points, 387 yards a game. But the 49ers' defense has been a lot better, averaging 23 points and 326 yards allowed on average a game. I do think the Bills have the edge on offense, though, averaging 27 points to the 49ers' 23 points per game. And Josh Allen's having a fantastic season, 22 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, over 3,000 yards passing. I do think it's going to be a really close one. But I'm going to go with the Bills, 25-22, to just, just edging out the 49ers in a win. And now we have the 3-8 and eight Dallas Cowboys going up against the 6-4 and four Baltimore Ravens. The Cowboys are coming off of a huge loss from, the, from Washington, 41-16. to And the Ravens game, like I said, against the Steelers is being postponed, so I'm not even entirely sure if they're going to play this week. Uh, but assuming that, again, not, that there are no injuries that happen in that game if it is played this week, uh, that's what I'm going to assume. Uh, the Cowboys defense has has been probably one of the or probably the worst in the league, averaging 32 points and almost 400 yards allowed per game. On the other hand, the Ravens defense has been one of the best in the league, allowing 19 points, 353 yards a game. And their offense has been good, too, averaging 26 points, 357 yards a game. I'm going to go with the Ravens in this one, 30 to 20 over the Cowboys. Thank you for watching and don't forget to post your predictions in the comments below and please consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video, but thank you for watching and I will see you next time.